So Vince, we're here in a large cubicle shed here um, down in Munster. Could you describe the work you've done here? Yeah, first day I came in here, had a look, a uh, fine size building, had seen the plans before I started, um, had made out the crossover points, uh, what was required to get to the parlour, to the right, the field to the left, um, locking cows back from cubicles, locking cows back from uh, zero grazing grass. Uh, so we have self-locking stalls, three double lines of cubicles with self-locking stalls on the far off side. Yeah, All feed barrier is self-locking yeah. stalls. Yeah. Um, the cubicles, uh, the cubicle bed here is 14 foot. Um, the poles are positioned offset to the cubicle bed, even though the cubicle center is dead center on the offset. Um, the double bed here is 14 foot. The cubicles are six foot trees on a 14 foot bed, which are stepped back six to nine inches varying uh, cubicles are hanging on three inch pipe double mounting brackets the brackets have four bolts not two most others hang the cubicles on two and a half inch pipe and only one bolt so you have four bolts two bolts are squeezing on the on the pipe and two bolts are squeezing on the cubicle that is top and bottom all the cubicle piping is mounted to the side of the rail, not welded to the rail. It's U-bolted to the rail. Uh, the headrail clamps are as normal. Most people have the same clamps. The cubicle itself is Huberman pipe, 3.6 mil wall, and it's not flaked in the corners. And when you say not flaked in the corner, what does that mean? Some of the pipe that's, that is manufactured is not certified for tube bending where this is certified pipe for tube bending, so the galvanized doesn't crack. Right. There was a time that we had um, piping that came in and you could have one bale perfect and the next, next bale all flaked. Right. So it was obsolete. Yeah. So we just had to pay the extra for the better pipe. What design of cubicle would you call this? Super loop. Super loop. Okay. Super loop. Right. Uh, you have grand spec and non grand spec. She's 900, grand spec is 960. They're the only two different. Same cubicle, same thing, only higher by 60 mil, which is two and a half inches. Right. Position of that bar there, how important is that there? Uh, it's Top down bar. to the size of the cow. You can have Josie Cross, you can have uh, Holstein, you can have um, British Frisian, whatever make a cow, you're all, no cow is the same, no herd is the same. My measurement is come up vertical out of the scraper passage and 1,600 millimetres to the clamp. And that is across the board. It is up to you then, if you have a smaller cow or a bigger cow, you shove it forward or bring it back. Shove what forward? The, cubic uh, the whole head rail. Right. You can slide okay. it forward, which yeah. the bracket on the wall allows you to do so. Right. Shove it forward for the bigger cow, bring it back for the smaller cow. Right. They recommend that you shove it forward when you put on the brisket board, which we put on a brisket pipe. So it is the pipe that keeps the cow back. Right. Not the head rail. Right. When a cow goes on her knees, she's going to utilize the space anyway, so does, this doesn't matter. Where she will not lie up in the pipe, she'll lie behind it. And regardless of the cow size, is that, that in a fixed position? That is in a that fixed never changes. Uh, fixed position. Yeah. Varies on the into the cow again. Bigger cow, 67 inches. Smaller cow, 63 inches. Right. So you, just, you said a, we have a Holstein cow here on this farm? Yes. So the weight of a, a cubicle in? Three foot nine, three foot ten. Right. I think they're 40, 45 inches. Three foot nine, I think, for my remember. 45 inches. Okay. Three foot nine. So if you had a crossbred there? Uh, crossbred, anything uh, somewhere in three foot seven to three foot eight. Okay. British Frisian cow, same thing. 45. Right. Three foot nine. But that doesn't work. You can take a, a handy size shed of 63 feet. It's 16 spaces and it works out of 46 and a half inch centers. The longer the shed, the better chance you have of creating a choice of to pull it back an inch or shove it forward an inch. The longer it goes, the better it gets. Okay. You can work your spaces. You have more options or more flexibility? More flexibility. Right, okay. In a six space shed, you might get 70 or uh, 33 spaces instead of 32. 
That's the way you're looking at it. Yeah. So the weight of a double bed then? 14 foot. Right. And is there any variation on that, do you think? Well, you would, uh, fella, you fellas go back to 13 foot 6 if they were tight for space. Yeah. But 14 foot is more than adequate. Right. You can have 15, you can have 16, where you have to work with 16 at times because you could have a pillar at the back of the bed and the scraper must pass it. And you have a pillar on the other side of the bed and the scraper must pass it. So if you take the bay width of 15 foot 9, which is centre to centre, plus the pole on both sides, brings you up to 16 foot. Pure waste of space. But you can't do nothing with it because of the pillars in the shed. Okay. That'd be in a conversion job. Right. Some of our customers in the UK would have sand beds. Yes. As opposed to rubber. Is there any difference in dimensions then, would you see? Or? Uh, you'll see your, it's down to the cleaning of the bed. And if you look at this shed, there's in this 30 cubicles here, there is three cow downs on that of different size cows, even though the cubicle centers are 45 inches. It straightens the cow more inside in the cubicle, but you have the smaller cow that can just take the angle right. and she will shit up on the back of the bit. Okay. So on some farms I would see they don't have that flexibility there. They can move, they don't. It's fixed to the wall. Yeah. But well, they have the ability to move We have the, the ability, yeah, yeah. It's a fixed, it's, important feature. it's an adjustment without cutting, rebolting, whatever. It's an adjustment yeah. that can be done. Yeah. And that is the reason for it. Does it happen often, typically, in farms? Most that farms, uh, some fellas would be very critical of what they're cleaning off the beds, and they'd ring up and they'd ask to know, what can we do? And I bring it forward, shove it back. Some okay. fellas ask to know, would we, can we put a headrail underneath? You right. can, but you're restricting the cow on the neck. Right. Prefer to keep it where it is, put in brisket. Okay. And the br brisket is a pipe, steel pipe, no joints, joiner, no cutting. No, nothing, no welding. It's adjustable on the cubicle. Furthermore, any dirt, when you're washing the cubicle house, the space underneath the pipe will allow the dirt to come out. Yeah, it's important. It's sort of other options where it's fixed to the floor and- It creates a dung hole. Yes. Because you can't wash it out. Right. If somebody in here trying to clean out this space, it's gathering behind it, you'll have to pike it out and it's not a nice job. Okay. We're here. You can get your power washer and wash the whole letter. Okay. Height of bed? Eight inches, 200 mil, with the mat over it. Some fellas would like to go for the smaller bed, uh, not as high, six, seven inches, but you must remember there's a scraper coming down here, which is a seven inch ear on the scraper. So if the cow is overhanging the bed and the scraper comes down on a seven inch bed, it is catching the back of the cow. Okay. So what that is doing is pushing the cow into the cubicle bed. Yeah. So my theory in all of it is eight inch with the mat on top. Right. And speaking of mats then, what have you put on here? A uh, Huber, uh, Huber comfort roll. It's a continuous roll, no giants. 25 mil including the bung. Uh, you can get in three different lengths. 1850 is what he what's here. 1700 is another option. And 1600 then we have for weanlings. So you have three options out of the comfort roll. Okay. Well, and what he does is he is a bob man and he uh, cleans and sawdust and lime. So no joint is a help then, like individual mats, I suppose, or for a purpose like for that. For washing? Yeah. Or Super job. Yeah. Very clean. Yeah. If you uh, lift up that mat, there's the concrete from first day. Yeah. Absolutely spotless. No Ooh. leakage, no, huh? no contamination of it. No contamination, everything yeah. is over. Yeah. And nowadays, there's a 15 year warranty with that Huber roll. Okay. Fellas will tell you this might be a bit hard, but anything is better than concrete. But I can tell you, if you give, leave the cows out in a paddock near this shed in summertime, at night or during the day, and you left the gate opened for the cows to come back into the shed, I can tell you they'll lie in here preferably than lie outside in the field if they have the option. And I've seen it. So your is, as far as I'm concerned, is co more comfortable than lying in the field. Right. Your position of your upright there relative to the pillar, could you explain that? And uh, it the, the vertical? Yeah. Normally, if that was clear span with no pillar in the shade, I'd be going maximum distance between the pillars would be 2.5 meters. I tried to try and keep it somewhere between 2.2 and 2.5. In this case, they're only 4.8. So this distance between them is 
2.4. Yeah. Right? Uh, but we have to offset it. One space is slightly bigger than the other because I don't want the pole where the cubicle is going. Right. Um, that pillar is a five mil wall pole, three inch outside diameter. The horizontal bar is 3.2, which is blue bend, but the pole is red bend. Where most fellas will only put in 3.2 pole, where we put in the five mil. And the pole. difference between red bend and blue bend? Uh, you have two mil. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 4.5, uh, you're talking about 2.2 mil. That's the difference, wall thickness. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, longer, durability. But in saying that, I have no worries about this because it's clean and dry. Okay. But you could have a lot of sheds where it could be damp, space sheeting in the head, no space sheeting here. Mm.